My name's Duncan Kearney from CCM Energy Solutions. And my guess, to use a Monty Python sketch, now for something completely different. I'm not on the refrigeration side, I'm not on the cooling side. Uh, we're going to get into gas efficiencies, boilers and burners. It is all energy savings, but what I'm going to talk to you today about is improving energy efficiency for steam boilers, heating boilers, direct fired hot water heaters, and also emissions reporting, logging, and recording. So my company started out in 2008 as a boiler room energy service company. Um, we started to do energy audits, looking at the existing setup on site. We go into a plant room, we'd record gas usage, electricity usage, measure the emissions for the existing setup, and measure cycling efficiency, how often systems are turning on and off. From that data, we do our logging to see what we think we'd be able to achieve with that existing setup. And what we do is retrofit equipment onto existing boilers, existing burners, if they can run efficiently. When we put all of our data together, we start to collate different solutions or options for the customer. They can vary from keeping the existing equipment that you have and making some control strategy changes to complete upgrades, replacing the burners, putting high efficiency control systems on there, um, measuring carbon emissions and being able to audit that. Obviously every solution comes with a different cost, return on investment, payback period and net, uh, net present value calculations. Once we decide to go ahead with one of the solutions, we'll take care of the complete project management. Um, so we'll do all the engineering design, mechanical drawings, electrical drawings, then we'll subcontract out at the installation work, and then we'll go to site to verify the installation has been done correctly, and then we'll assist with the commissioning to make sure that what we have offered to the customer, we achieve the results that we're looking to achieve. We make sure the system is set up optimally for every customer. Now every customer has different needs, whether you have steam requirements that are different over the weekend to during the week, we are able to optimise our solution to adapt it to that the client. We offer obviously staff training and we do then project reports and analysis. So we do measurement and verification studies. We get our before data, we use IPMVP protocol to predict what the savings would be um, based on our baseline data and then we see what the actual results are. So we use avoided energy usage as our uh, measurement. So the company aims for our boiler room solutions, we're looking for fuel savings, whether it's natural gas, LPG, uh, diesel, bunker C, um, whatever the fuel source that's being used through that burner, um, we're looking to reduce that fuel usage. From that, we also get reduced greenhouse gas emissions, reduced carbon emissions, reduced NOx, SOx emissions, depending on the fuel. Uh, we look at reduced maintenance costs, uh, we're re replacing any mechanical components, we're getting rid of all the moving parts, um, so we're getting better performance, there's less maintenance, less operating costs. Um, we also add variable speed drives to blower motors, um, better control of the feed water supply to boilers, um, so we reduce our water and um, electricity usage at the same time. From all of these systems, we're looking at improving combustion efficiency, thermal efficiencies, boiler efficiencies, and ultimately plant efficiency. So you're using less fuel per product. Obviously, safety and reliability is foremost for us. Um, it has to be done correctly um, and complies with all Australian standards and approvals. In regards to the equipment that we offer, um, when we go to a site, if we need more than control strategy changes, um, we distribute a range of energy efficiency products, um, all of which are manufactured out of the UK. Um, the Sabian Technologies, they have an M2G unit used for small domestic or commercial heating boilers or direct fired hot water systems, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. For the larger commercial energy users and up to heavy industry users, um, we use a burner manufactured via Limpsfield, um, and they range from 220 kilowatts right through to 62 megawatts. So it's a good range of what that burner can do. We also can look at combustion management systems, getting rid of all the mechanical controls, and that's done through a company called Autoflame. And again, I'll talk a bit more about them soon. We can also do exhaust gas analysis, where we have an in situ probe measuring oxygen, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, NOx, SOx, um, exhaust temperatures. So we have a real understanding of everything that is being emitted through the, the stack. We also do SEMS, continuous emissions monitoring, um, full steam boiler controls, um, 
And obviously, as I say, we have technical expertise. I've actually worked for two of those companies back in the UK. In regards to the burners, um, these are the Limpsfield burners that we would apply to the, the relevant solution. On the left-hand side, that's a 12 megawatt um, Hongnup Vietnamese boiler. Um, so the burner's rated about 14.5 megawatts, uh, firing on natural gas only. Um, it was a new installation. Um, uh, the company down in the Riverina is producing vegetable oil. Um, so there were no savings that we could apply to that project, um, brand new installation. The boiler on the right is a greenhouse application in Queensland, 3.6 uh, megawatt uh, fire tube boiler. They're firing on LPG, and on that application, the customer has reported savings of around 19.8%. Um, that was retrofitting the old burner with mechanical controls to this high efficiency option. When we look at the Limsfield burners, um, when I go to a site and I conduct my measurements, what I'm trying to look at on combustion efficiency is how well that existing setup is running at high fire, mid fire, and low fire. And typically on a site, the high fire oxygen levels will be 3 to 5%, which is okay. Once we start to modulate down to mid fire and down to low fire, those oxygen levels can go through to 7, 8%, and on some occasions 11, 12%, which is terrible. With this Limpsfield burner, we can guarantee the oxygen levels that will always be 2 to 3% or sub 3% at every firing rate from high to low fire. And that is unique, and they have a performance guarantee that comes with every burner. And the reason they can state that is every application the burner is bespoke is manufactured for that boiler. So we look at flue gas pressures, back pressures, incoming gas pressures, uh, flow requirements, steam output, and that burner is designed to give you what you need. It has low CO production, pretty much zero, at every single firing rate. Uh, the turndown we get with the burner as standard is 6 to 1. We can take that to 10 or 12 to 1 with a different head design. By having these low oxygen levels, that means we have low excess air levels, which means we have less air that we have to heat that goes through the boiler. That means our stack temperatures are lower, our oxygen levels are lower, our combustion efficiency is higher. It also means those hot gases stay in the boiler for longer, which means we get better resonance time of the hot gases. We get better thermal efficiency. There's better transfer of that heat into the, the water. Typically, we would see savings in excess of 10%. But as I said, it's very much dependent on the application. Those savings can go up to 35% on a very badly um, looked after boiler and corresponding lower greenhouse gas emissions, which we can measure and audit. And as I say, we have reduced maintenance requirements, operating costs by improved reliability and fewer moving parts. As I said, the range of these burners, they have a package burner that operates from 220 kilowatts through to 3 megawatts, and then outside of it, we move into the bespoke burners up to 62 megawatts. So that pretty much covers the majority of boiler applications here in Australia. The fuels that the burner can fire are gases and oils. So gases can be natural gas, LPG, LNG, um, hydrogen, or biogas. If you have an abattoir or um, ethanol plants, if you're releasing biogas as a waste product, there's no point in flaring that off to the atmosphere. We can use that as a perfectly good fuel so source. And through the burner, we're able to either mix the biogas and natural gas before it enters the burner, or we can have two separate gas ports onto the burner. And what that means is we can use as much biogas as is available and use the natural gas to back up the requirement to make sure we have our steam load. Ensures obviously our lowest um, natural gas usage. We also can use oils, um, biofuels, animal fats, tallow, byproducts, um, and solvents as well. With the burner, the, uh, I fired six fuels through one burner head um, on a site in Israel where they had natural gas, diesel, and four different solvents. Um, but typically, we're looking at single fuel applications, natural gas or LPG, um, or dual fuel applications of natural gas and biogas, or diesel as a backup. Low NOx doesn't really happen in Australia. Um, it's much more a thing for the US market, um, but with uh, this burner, we can look at low NOx of sub-30 ppm through flue gas recirculation, or using a mesh burner head design, we can get to single-digit NOx. We can also use preheat 
applications on uh, petrochemical sites where we preheat the air up to 280 degrees. Um, by increasing the inlet air temperature from 25 degrees to 280 degrees, typically your efficiency gains are, or fuel savings are around 9, 10%. And as it says, you've got a unique large viewing port at the back. Um, for those that have seen many burners in the marketplace, you're normally looking through a small portal about an inch um, in diameter. We're looking at a 12 inch space where we can really see the, the flame and what's going on, the full geometry of that combustion process. Just a couple of uh, applications with the Limsfield burners. Um, so this is a project at Alice Springs. Um, this, these are two two megawatt John Thompson water tube boilers. Um, we installed dual fuel burners, natural gas and diesel. Um, and this is the combustion results as taken from the analyzer. Importantly, you can see here the oxygen readings, 2.5 up to 3%. And that was 6 to 1 at that point here. The last two points, the customer wanted us to give them 9 to 1 on that site. So hence, we had to go over that 3% to 3.1. This is the analyzer that we install on the burners, measuring oxygen, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, and NOx. And this is me just showing that there's no vibration on the burner either. For a case study for energy savings, this is at the Darwin, Royal Darwin Hospital. Um, originally, they had a four megawatt uh, John Thompson boiler. Um, it had a Saki linkage burner installed on there. A mechanical linkage-based system, inefficient and costly um, and difficult to maintain in service. The scope of works by the engineering consultants on this site was to change the burner out for LPG-fired system. We suggested to the consultant we should use LPG and have diesel as a backup with the burner. This project was done three years ago. No LPG is on site. So thankfully, they went with us using a dual fuel system. Um, they still don't have LPG, and they never think they will have. With the system, we in included an auto flame control system, analyzer, variable speed drive, um, and we saw significant reductions in diesel consumption, um, reduced CO2 emissions, and electrical consumption. And these are the savings as reported by the customer. Uh, fuel savings are around 12.1%, which equated to 125,000 litres a year, uh, giving a payback period of um, well under two years. Um, annual CO2 reductions of 460 tonnes and electrical consumption from the drive was uh, 50,500 kilowatt hours. Um, and this is the, the change over date, as you can see. Blue lines before and the red lines after. With every Limsfield burner, they come packaged with a combustion management system. This combustion management system, however, can be adapted to any existing boiler burner setup. Now, Autoflame were the pioneers of microprocessors for fuel aeration control in the 80s when computers came into the marketplace. The owner of Autoflame said, let's use that to control combustion. Let's get rid of all the mechanical components, your cams, your linkages. Let's get rid of all of that and use direct drive servo motors. And that is how the whole concept came about. There are obviously other manufacturers out there, but this is where it all started. Since then, the controller has been modified and adapted to suit all client requirements. So it now has internal burner management system. Uh, you can use a variable speed drive. Uh, we have servo motors, scanners, um, temperature sensors, um, probes for level control, steam level control, exhaust gas analyzers. Um, it really has advanced to not only being a burner management system, to now do everything you need on your steam boiler. If we take a typical pre-installation setup on a site, and this is a standard burner, you have one modulating motor here controlling your cams and jack shafts and your gas valve. That's one motor controlling that gas and air, which means you can never have optimum combustion. You have a completely separate black box, a burner safety box uh, mounted in the panel, a completely separate proportional integral derivative controller and pressure sensor. If it's a steam boiler, you'll have a completely separate water level controller. If you're looking at multiple boilers, you'll have another box that does your lead lag control. What we want to do is strip all of that off. All the individual components we're going to get rid of, and everything is now wired through this unit. And this is the first look of this unit in Australia. Uh, this only got released two weeks ago. This is their new flagship, the, the Mark 8. 
it incorporates everything that you need on the boiler. And as you can see here, servo motors, variable speed drives, scanners, temperature sensors, steam sensors, analyzers, everything is incorporated into that one unit. This is a 12.1 inch touchscreen display, multi-touch capacitive uh, screen display. And this, as I said, does everything on the boiler. You get rid of all the PLCs, you get rid of all the individual controllers in your panel, and everything is done through this unit. As I said at the start, the system started out in the 80s as a fuel air ratio controller. So here we're measuring our air damper and our gas valve or oil valve here. And we fine tune that. We tell exactly how much gas and exactly how much air is needed at every point from high to low fire. We can add additional controls, flue gas recirculation, uh, stack damper controls, um, um, atomizing valves for oil. On top of that, we then added within this controller a burner management system. So it does your flame detection through UV and infrared uh, scanners. It does your valve proofing or leakage detection of the gas valves, your high low pressure limits, air pressure supervision. So all of the burner management is now housed within this unit. We can also add a separate fuel flow meter. So we take a four to 20 milliamp signal from a gas meter and that tells this unit exactly how much fuel is being used. So we have a firing rate and exactly how much gas that system, that burner is consuming. That allows us to a lot of efficiency calculations, which I'll come on to. The next item external to this unit that we can add is an emissions monitoring, an exhaust gas analyzer. And that feeds back the data from the stack to tell this system how efficient it is, what is my combustion efficiency at that moment. And based on any variations in barometric pressure, temperature, fuel pressure, it can adjust that combustion to optimize it to how it was originally set up. We can then add within this system a lead lag controller, a couple of cables between the different boilers and then it will determine how many boilers need to run to maintain the load requirement on that site. We then added a water level control system. So this does all of your boiler steam management as well. And the nice thing about this is this unit here knows how much fuel is going in. We know our losses through the stack from our analyzer here. By doing simple physics calculations, we know our steam pressure and hence temperature. Instead of having to install a full steam flow meter and cut into the orifice, uh, cut into the stack, we can add one temperature sensor. And from that, that gives us our full steam flow characteristics for that boiler. Obviously a lot lower cost than a, a steam flow meter. This unit also does all of the blowdown management for your steam boiler as well. Your surface blowdown, your total dissolved solids analysis, whether you're maintaining 2,000, 2,500 parts per million. This will measure that and blow down the boiler accordingly. It also does your bottom blowdown, your sludge buildup at the bottom of the boiler. And that is based on how often the burn has been firing. So we get an energy saving, typically 1% to 2% from this management system as well. The next few slides um, I will go through quickly. You can read them. It just kind of covers a lot of what I've discussed already. Um, I did leave them in. But they do show that there's about 400 different settings within that controller to make sure it works for every application. Um, if you have a manufacturing site, and it, they close operations at midday on Saturday and start up at 6 a.m. on Monday. Most of those sites, that boiler keeps running. There's absolutely no point. This has an automatic start function within it to bring it on at 4 a.m. on Monday. You don't need to be using gas when the system is really not needed. Or if you need to keep it warm, because there is part of the process that's still running, we can vary the set point. Instead of running at 1,000 kPa, it can run at 700 kPa over the weekend. A lot of different control functions that are built into this. With the latest unit, there are a couple of nice additions that have been included. Um, as I said, we've got water level control, um, steam flow metering, surface blowdown, bottom blowdown. There are also 15 first out enunciation inputs, which is taking up a lot of what the old PLC controls used to do. This isn't a PLC, it's a class one safety device that cannot be programmed out of set parameters that are dictated to by the approvals bodies. 
The other two additions that have been included is the ability to measure economizer efficiencies. So we can measure the inlet and outlet temperatures from economizers and see how well that's running. And it's now a fully metered system. And what that means is when you've got dual fuel control of natural gas and biogas, we can, if the biogas flow starts to drop, the natural gas will pick it up. So we can balance those two fuel flows um, through this control system. And that's something that's just come out very recently. We did a, uh, an installation about 16 months ago at a site, a laundry up in Queensland. Um, this is a Cleaver Brooks boiler. They are common on abattoirs and laundries throughout Australia. Um, the existing burner that you've got here is still very common. This is mechanically driven. You see one modulating motor here controlling a jack shaft along here, other linkage arms coming down here to control that rotating air damper. Another linkage arm comes down here to control that gas valve. You cannot run that system efficiently. Um, so what we do is we strip all of that off. All of those linkage pieces come off and we put a direct drive servo motor. So this motor here is dedicated to controlling that air damper. And we use a two to one gear ratio which gives us 90 degree movement on the uh, the servo motor with a 45 degree movement on the damper, which is what those Cleaver Brooks have. A second servo motor would be down here controlling the gas valve. On this application, we also incorporated our water level controls. So instead of using an on off function for the water level, we used a modulating control to maintain optimum steam output for that boiler. The overall savings uh, using LPG were around 13%, 13.2%, um, leading to a sub six month payback period. Obviously LPG at the time, 16 months ago, was um, expensive. Um, so we saw a very quick return on investment. And the peak gas usage, being a laundry, they have sudden swings in uh, steam demand, was reduced from 58 cubic meters an hour down to 50. Um, better steam quality that we got from our modulating control. The next phase that we're looking at on the site is to actually install a Limpsfield burner. Um, which would again give us a further probably 10 to 15 en uh, percent energy savings. What you'll see on this site here, which is one that I worked on in the US, is the control system is mounted here and our analyzer is mounted here, which is measuring those emissions. With the current exhaust gas analyzer, we're able to measure and report all of the flue gas emissions. So it's an in situ stationary analyzer measuring oxygen carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, NOx and SOx, and it is unique to the boiler industry. Everyone talks about oxygen when they're measuring emissions from boilers. Oxygen trim. Oxygen trim is not safe. You need to be cross-referencing that with a second, sec, um, second reading, whether that be carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide. Um, this analyzer measures up to six parameters, um, and we can actually log the data that's coming off there. So it offers real-time analysis of the emissions at your fingertips. We now have, instead of this screen here, it's now a full uh, 10 and a half inch touchscreen display. It displays your efficiency levels, your fuel usage, and your carbon footprint. It tells you what your CO2 emissions are in terms of kilograms, tons, and you can now input your fuel data and fuel costs, and it'll tell you how much fuel you're using. It's a full SEMS package, package, continuous emissions monitoring software. Um, there's more information here, but the, the other thing, as I mentioned earlier, is if we make that talk back to the main control module here, we have our, what everyone calls oxygen trim. We have a five parameter trim, where we measure oxygen, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, ambient temperature and pressure. So we use a five parameter trim. Within that unit, we also have two years of data storage. So these are some of the logs that we start to generate. Um, firstly, with the different cells, they're electrochemical cells, so we are measuring the readings from those cells continuously. You can see here the degradation over time. When we drop below this red line, it gives you an indication saying, look, you need to replace that cell. Once we get down to the green line here, you have to have the cell replaced or else it's not going to read accurately. This chart here shows us on the, the left, we have the blue line, which is our oxygen. The red line are carbon dioxide. We have carbon monoxide and NOx as PPM. You can see the date and time frame here and a lot of buttons on there. 
you can choose the range that you want to view. So you can view an hour's data, a week's data, a month's data, a quarter, or annual data. As soon as you choose the time that you want to see, we press this audit button here, and it will give us a chart. And this will tell you here your totalized value between this date and this date, which is what you've selected, give you your oxygen, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, NOx, SOx, water, nitrogen, all of your emissions that would be going up the stack. Obviously, the important one here is our carbon emissions. It'll tell you in that period of time what is your weight and tonnage of carbon that you've been emitting from that boiler. With the system knowing exactly how much fuel is going in, we can also characterize the fuel. So if you know your carbon hydrogen content of the fuel and the cal calorific value, we can put that into this unit. You can put in your fuel cost as well. And down here, it will tell you how much fuel you've used and give you a cost that you can cross-reference with your, your gas bills. So this is unique. Um, I think these are the first guys that are doing this, or have been the first guys. There are other people that now have analyzers in the US that have that kind of data. But this is, as I say, being cross-referenced with the, the main combustion controller to make sure you're running that burner boiler as well as possible. With all of that data, um, we are also able to review that data uh, through your building management system. So you, if you have multiple boilers or mul multiple gas-fired systems on site, whether they be boilers, ovens, um, you can bring all of that data back to your building management system and you can review all of that data. Um, the data transfer unit stores two years of data, but obviously your BMS can store many, many more years. The nice thing about this is obviously all of that data that I showed you here and all of the burner management data is then all at your fingertips, right in front of you in terms of the, the screenshots. So you can see your CO2 emissions. If you have multiple sites throughout Australia, we can then bring all of that data back from all of your sites into one location, whether that be a board meeting or to a head office and you can log into any one of those sites to see exactly what is going in at any one time. The nice thing about that is you can see how well the systems are performing. You can cross-reference your gas flow data with your steam flow data. You can see your fuel to steam efficiency. That means if something is going wrong on site, you can set alarms to say, oh, my fuel, fuel to steam efficiency has dropped off. You can identify maybe a steam leak um, the chemical treatment of the water coming in isn't being looked after. You've got a new service company, maybe they're not looking after the system. You can be proactive about maintaining optimum efficiency with your burner and boiler. And that's something that's um, come out uh, more recently. And the screenshot here shows it going to the, the cloud. So that's really on um, larger commercial buildings um, through to heavy industry users. Um, for small commercial um, boilers um, from 100 kilowatts up to 2 megawatts, we look at a completely different technology which is manufactured by Sabian Technology and they have a patent on their M2G system. And what that does is designed to stop the inherent problem of dry cycling. If you see small boilers, they typically have high-low burners or on-off burners and they will turn on and off repetitively, maybe 15, 20, 30 times an hour. This system is designed to stop that problem. Typical fuel savings with this system is 5 to 25%. And because it's a very low cost and quick and easy installation, the payback periods are typically six months to two years. And as it says, there is around 10,000 units installed worldwide. Um, some of their customers, um, you probably recognize a lot of the names there. With boiler load optimization, um, these are some of the other techniques you can do to reduce fuel usage in commercial buildings. With boiler load optimization, this MTG unit has been specifically designed to overcome excessive dry cycling. It's retrofitted onto existing boilers. It complements your building management strategies, outdoor reset controls, sequencing. Um, it uses flow and return temperatures to, and proprietary software to regulate the dry cycling. And the key point here is it prevents boilers cycling to recover standing losses. That's where you start to lose energy. It only responds when you have a genuine call for heat. And as it says, it's widely overlooked. As initial site analysis, um, when, during the colder months, when the boiler turns on in the, moiler, in the morning, it will run for a prolonged period to heat the building up. 
and you see these pink sections here, that's when the, there is a genuine load on site, maybe the showers or heating for the building. After that period, the boiler turns on and off repetitively or can, and this is data that we use using a current logger on the gas valves. If I see this type of data with lots of red lines here, that means the boiler is turning on and off within a 15 minute period. That is where the M2G can make a significant difference. So how does the system work? What it does is it measures that flow and return temperature. Your, your existing burner or boiler will measure just the outlet temperature from the boiler, whether that's 75 degrees, 80 degrees. When it reaches that temperature, it turns off. It drops a couple of degrees, that burner turns straight back on. That's not a genuine load demand. That's just replacing the losses of the boiler through the shell or the jacket or any piping losses. What the Sabian system does is it not only measures the flow, it also measures the return temperature for the, from the system. And what we do is we set up two dead bands for flow and return. So when the temperature drops here, the existing burner will say, I need to start up. The Sabian system will say, hang on, let's wait and see what happens with our return temperature as well. And as a default, that's set to three degrees or eight degrees. So only if one of these temperatures drops below that set point will it allow the burner to actually start up again. After 15 minutes, it resets that because it wants to make sure you still have load if there is any uh, requirement on site. So it's a 15 minute uh, default in there. As I say, it's identifying a genuine call for heat. And it also measures your individual boilers. So your, ex your BMS will be measuring a common header temperature and a common return temperature. That doesn't look at your individual boilers. It looks on a macro level, whereas we want to be looking on a micro level. To just finish a couple of very quick case studies, um, a university in Sydney um, that we worked with, um, 700 kilowatt leisure centre uh, heating boiler. The important value is here, the fuel reduction was 18%. Uh, when we did our regression analysis and degree day adjustments, we were down to 9.5%. Payback period was sub one year with a 43 tonnes of CO2 reduced. You can see here the cycling reduced from about 70 times per day down to about 30 times. Um, not only do you get the energy savings, but there's less wear on the burner, which means you get prolonged life out of the system. And finally, a Sydney hotel where we installed the system on two one megawatt boilers. Um, the year-on-year -year savings were 11%, um, payback was uh, 0 0.62 years um, with a pretty decent CO2 reduction as well of 173 tonnes. Thank you very much for listening, guys.